This is crazy. You can't leave. I can't stay. Even with the work study, I won't make my next tuition installment. Taxi! I'll get you the money, okay? I got something big lined up. Don't worry about me. Just take care of yourself. Excuse me. You spare something? Beat it! Everything's gonna be all right. I love you. Call me, okay? You a Marine? Yeah. They take it all serious? Yeah. Thanks, buddy. God bless. Two in the chest. A student biking through the alley heard the shots around 2110. Patrol got here quick. Faculty parking garage, not exactly ground zero for gun crime. You secure the area? First thing, no ins or outs till you release the scene. No wallet or ID, but we got a dormitory key card. Let's see what else is good. Looks like he was a business major. Yeah, minoring in herbology. Looks like the campus dope dealer. Mark his report card D for deceased. It's Greg. Greg Tanner. He's been crashing here. I can't believe this. How'd you know? We met at the cafeteria. He's not a student or anything. He said he had a sister here. He was mature and nice. Really nice. His double bag's military issue. Was he in the service? Yeah. Um, Greg said he had nightmares from it. But we didn't talk much, you know? You talk about this? Oh my god. If I knew about that, I swear, he would have been gone. Was anyone giving him trouble? I don't know. Uh, last Saturday, I saw him outside of Rocco's. He was getting into it with some Hispanic guy, but Greg said it was nothing. When was the last time you saw him? It was two days ago. I had to leave school. My financial aid fell through. Greg said not to go, that he'd help me. Megan, how did he end up living on campus? It was because of me. After he got out of the service, he had no place else to go. My mom's at a home in Pittsburgh. She's got Parkinson's. Dad died when I was 10. Greg joined the Marines so he could be like him. He never said where they sent him, but me and my mom would get emails, a phone call at Christmas. Then he showed up at my dorm one day. He'd been discharged, but he didn't come back the same guy. How was he different? He got anxious a lot. He needed help, but I think he was having problems getting his army benefits. Megan, do you know what your brother was doing on campus? I think auditing classes. I didn't see him much the last few weeks. Why? We believe he was dealing drugs. Oh, God. Okay. I might have seen him around campus. Now, how about the faculty garage Wednesday night, say around 9? I wasn't in the garage Wednesday. If you'll excuse me, I have a class of law students waiting. Uh, oh, God, we actually, we have a few more questions. you have to call me later. Not so fast, Professor. We believe that you were in that garage, maybe to do a little business with Mr. Tanner. Business? Score a little pot for your weekend barbecue? Are you kidding me? I used to work for the Department of Justice. Look, we, we don't care if you like the occasional joint. Well, I don't. And if I saw something, I assure you, I know my obligations, but I wasn't in the garage. Then tell us why you left your car there overnight Wednesday. I finished teaching my class around 9. I went to Wordplay on Amsterdam to buy a book. What book? John Rawls' Theory of Justice, the new annotated edition. You buy it? No, there was a line at the cashier, so I walked back to the garage, but the police had already sealed it off. What time was this? Just after 9.30, I guess. My wife was waiting up, so I got a cab to Grand Central, and I caught the last Metro North to Hastings. Right. The new Rawls edition came in last week. What kind of traffic did you have at the register Wednesday night? Traffic? You're joking, right? This place is dead after dinner. Dead. Great. Hey, 
Just ran Kevin Franklin through the system. He was arrested in Hastings last year. Get this on a CPW. CPW, how sweet is that? Mr. Franklin got into a fender bender on North Street with a Max Epstein. In the CPW. Epstein claimed Franklin flashed a weapon. That was an exaggeration, but Franklin was carrying a piece in a hip holster. He said he had a carry permit, but he couldn't produce it, so the officer took him in. Did he have a permit? Turns out he did. Full carry for Westchester and a special permit for New York City. The charge was dropped. What kind of weapon did he have? 22 caliber Smith & Wesson. Sweeter and sweeter. I never heard Greg mention a Professor Franklin. Conflict of law, civil rights. You want to be a lawyer? Uh, those are Greg's. Is there anything else up there that belongs to him? That folder's not mine. Hey, I gotta go to a spin class, okay? Just don't mess with my stuff. You gotcha. Have fun spinning. Oh! Look at this. Course syllabus for Franklin's con law classes. And this. I need your help with the VA. If you just go on record, I don't know what you're talking about. I can't do this without you. Please, you owe me. Just get that thing out of my face. That bad blood seems to be about the Veterans Administration. Well, Tanner's sister said he was having trouble getting benefits. Sergeant Tanner received counseling for 30 days post-discharge. After that, his temporary benefits lapsed. And what was the counseling for? Come on, you know I can't get into that. How about what type of discharge he got? That's not classified. He got a 513 discharge. Separation from service due to a pre-existing personality disorder. Pre-existing, meaning whatever was wrong with him, it wasn't service-connected, meaning the military is not on the hook for his long-term care. That's how it works. Oh, man. A guy humps it for his country for eight years. He comes home, and then Uncle Sam just kicks him to the curb. Does that seem fair, Doc? No. Not for a soldier who acquired post-traumatic stress disorder from doing guard duty at Abu Ghraib. Greg was guarding terrorists. He said what he saw kept him up nights. Professor Franklin never mentioned to Greg Tanner. I highly doubt that he'd have anything to do with a drug dealer. He's wound tighter than a Swiss watch. He sounds pretty tough to get along with. He's very competitive. We're both up for tenure, except I don't have his fancy government pedigree. Not that I'm suggesting that he's unqualified, mind you, just that he's very well connected. He must be. Not too many law professors carry permits for handguns. That's because of the work he did for the Department of Justice. What kind of work? Drug enforcement? No. All I can tell you is that a number of Bush administration documents have recently been declassified, including a few memos that Franklin wrote. And, uh, you didn't hear from me? Mm. Techniques that may be used in interrogation of high-value Al-Qaeda detainees. Now, there's a sexy title. Mm -hmm. These declassified documents are all about handling terrorist suspects. This one says the president can send the army into American neighborhoods to make arrests. Now, here's one that Franklin wrote. Legal standards governing the detention and interrogation of unlawful enemy combatants. The entire playbook for Gitmo and Abu Ghraib. The playbook that set the working conditions for guards like Tanner. The conditions that caused his post-traumatic stress. Tanner might have seen it that way. And blamed Franklin. He said Franklin owed him. Maybe this was the payday Tanner was talking about, money from Franklin for his pain and suffering. There's your bad blood. And our probable cause for a search. Let's go. Connie, I think we got our PC on Franklin. You guys are about five minutes late. Come on in, detectives. Professor Franklin here just confessed to shooting Greg Tanner. He even brought the gun. Professor Franklin was being stalked by a mentally disturbed lunatic who would have costed him in a stairwell. If this office intends to file charges, my client will be arguing self-defense. Of myself and my country. <laughs>